Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. It is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. I'd like to extend my gratitude in you listening to this podcast. It means everything to me, and I hope it is clear that this subject matter is so important to me. I care about our people, our future, and making a positive change in this nation. This episode is powered by Poddex. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. Today, we'll be getting into some stories today on the solo tip. There is a significant update in the Ahmad Aubrey situation concerning Travis and Gregory McMichael that we will discuss. We also will talk about a update in the fatal shooting of Micaiah Bryant. We talked about the shooting of Micaiah Bryant from Ohio previously, so there is an update there. Also, the tragic death of the college student, Lauren Smith Fields, who died on December 12th. And then we learned of another African-American woman who died on the same day, Brenda Rawls. There is an update there that I want to share with you. There is a piece of legislation that has passed that will be heading to our president to be signed that I want to share with you about anti-lynching. And there's an update concerning the Brett Hankinson verdict. Now we may remember Brett Hankinson was one of the officers involved in the Breonna Taylor fatal shooting raid. And he was the only one to face the wanton endangerment charge for blindly shooting into the apartment. So I went to discuss that particular verdict with you guys. And there's an update with the Crown Act. So let's get into these stories and I appreciate you listening. So this first story is an update to the Ahmad Aubrey murder. And so as we may recall, Ahmad Aubrey was murdered February 23rd of 2020. The men responsible were convicted in the federal trial. So the verdict for the first federal trial resulted in all three men being found guilty of using force and threats of force forced to intimidate and interfere with Aubrey's right to use a public street because of his race. And then all three men were found guilty of attempted kidnapping. Travis McMichael was found guilty of using, carrying, brandishing, and firing a gun during a crime of violence. Greg McMichael was found guilty of using, carrying, and brandishing a gun during a crime of violence. That was the verdict from the federal trial and then I want to recap what the sentencing was and then we'll talk about the update. Okay, as a result of the verdict, both the McMichaels and Bryant faced the mandatory sentences of life imprisonment. The prosecution did not seek the death penalty in this case. The McMichaels were sentenced to life imprisonment with no parole an additional 20 years while Bryant was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after 30 years. Okay, so that was a federal trial. The hate crimes trial, the jury did find all three men guilty of all the charges in the federal hate crimes trial. Backing the prosecutor's case that the men chased the 25-year-old Ahmad Aubrey through the streets of Georgia because he was black. And so here is the update. Travis McMichael and his father, George McMichael, are seeking an acquittal of their federal hate crimes convictions related to the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, arguing that the 25-year-old black man's killing did not happen on public streets, according to court documents filed. And then they also are disputing that... Gregory McMichael targeted Arbery because of his race or color. The motion filed states that there was no evidence that he uttered the N-word or any other racial epithets against African-Americans. So we will see how this appeal 
will uh, take place. You know, they still have the other charges from the first trial, but they are seeking acquittal on these federal hate crime convictions. This next story is about the 16-year-old teenager, Micaiah Bryant, who was fatally shot by police last April in Franklin County, Ohio, where uh, we may recall a really tragic situation where a 16-year-old girl was fatally shot by police officer Nicholas Reardon in Columbus, Ohio. There was body cam footage released showing Brian brandishing a knife in a dispute or fight with two women and the officer approached and fired four shots striking Bryant at least once. Bryant immediately collapsed and was unresponsive. Uh, the officer and other officers on the scene attempted to administer first aid. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but she was later pronounced dead. And so this case was about the result of the officer who was responsible for her being fatally shot, Nicholas Reardon. So as a result, in Franklin County, the grand jury declined to indict the police officer who fatally shot Micaiah Bryant. The Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation was called in to investigate the officer involved shooting. They completed its probe and they did refer the case to the prosecuting attorney and they came back um, stating that they're not going to pursue any charge against this officer. Kaya Bryant was shot four times in the back, lower torso, right shoulder, and right thigh. Her cause of death was gunshot wounds to the torso and the manner of death um, on the report from the coroner's office uh, in Franklin County was homicide. They will not be indicting this officer as a result. So that's a little disappointing. Um, you know, she was the aggressor in the fight. However, you know, we would have hoped that the matter could have been de-escalated in a different way where she was not fatally shot and she could have been taken in without being um, shot down like she was so just a very misfortunate case you know, our thoughts are with the family who had to um, deal with her loss because that is very um, tragic to lose our 16 year old young girl this next story is about the two black women who died on December 12th, Lauren Smithfield, who was 23, and Brenda Lee Rawls, who was 53, who um, both women uh, sadly lost their lives December 12th. And so there's still not a person brought in custody for taking responsibility for these deaths. But the families of the two women who died had, uh, did come together uh, to have a public hearing in support of a bill that would require the police to notify families of the death of a loved one within 24 hours of identification. And so that is a uh, reflection of what occurred in both of their cases when both women died both of the families indicated that they were not contacted. They basically had to reach out to the police themselves and find out what was going on. And both families are accusing the police of being racially insensitive in the investigations. So uh, there is a bill that they are supporting that again, would, that would require the police to notify families of the death of a loved one within 24 hours of identification. And then a reminder of the incident with Lauren Smith Fields, she died after a date with a man she met on a dating app. The chief medical examiner ruled Smith Fields death accidental from an acute intoxication due to the combined effects of fentanyl, promethazine, 
hydroxyzine and alcohol, um, their family attorney is waiting, still awaiting the results of an independent autopsy. And then in the case of Brenda Rawls, the family states that, let's see, she died in the home of a man that she knew. However, no one has been um, you know, arrested or held responsible for her death as well. And this occurred in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now, in reference to this bill, police officers who violate the proposed law could be reported to the state office of the inspector general for investigation and face suspension. The committee did not vote on the bill, but, law mark, but lawmakers from both parties vowed to pass it. So that would be a significant piece of legislation if that could be passed to inform families of what's going on um, in cases of death. Um, you know, both of these women were single with no children. And so, um, you know, their next of kin should be informed of their death. So definitely support that. And we support these families. So I did want to inform you of this story. And we will keep you informed as there are still, uh, you know, several updates that could be made here. Next update is about a bill that was recently passed in the Senate. And it is called the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act which is named after the 14-year-old Emmett Till from Chicago, who was lynched while visiting family in Mississippi in 1955. Now, under the bill, a crime can be prosecuted as a lynching when a hate crime results in a death or injury. Lynching is a long-standing and uniquely American weapon of racial terror that has for decades been used to maintain the white hierarchy. And that this is from uh, Senator Bobby Rush, who is a longtime sponsor of this particular legislation. So, um, yeah, this uh, was really a big deal to have this type of legislation. We've seen some um, anti Asian hate legislation passed. So now we do um, have a piece of legislation that is in place for African Americans, named after African American Emmett Till, named anti lynching. Well, I guess the exact name is the Emmett Till Anti Lynching Act, and it is for hate crimes, any death or injury that results from a hate crime. So this would be in place and those uh you know heinous acts like we've seen in the Maude Arbery case for example so definitely um important update wanted to share that with you guys this update is about Brett Hankinson now Brett Hankinson was a former officer in Louisville Kentucky he was one of the officers who are involved in the raid where the 26 year old Brianna Taylor lost her life and was fatally shot by officers. Brett Hankinson was the only officer from the incident to be indicted on three counts of wanton endangerment. The other two officers who opened fire were not indicted. And so the update is that Brett Hankinson was not found guilty of the wanton endangerment during the raid, which killed Brianna Taylor. A Kentucky jury uh, cleared him of these charges. And basically with the wanton endangerment, he, uh, it was basically due to the fact that he fired blindly into the apartment building because he was outside of the apartment at the time of the incident. He wasn't one of the officers which was inside of the unit where Brianna Taylor was. He was actually outside um, and he really his shots really went into the neighbor's unit and they had a, a infant child and so that was one of the witnesses that took the stand in the case and this case was really kind of critical and crucial because while it wasn't about brianna taylor and the attorneys you know let us know that in their opening statement it was a possibility that some things could have depending on how this trial went it could have led to a civil suit for Brianna Taylor's family later depending on 
if he would have been convicted of this charge. And so um, it was really kind of critical to see how it went. And obviously, um, it did not go the way they were hoping for it to go, where he was not convicted on this charge, even um, in spite of the testimony from the neighbor. Um, So, you know, very disappointing for the family. They cleared him of all of the charges. So none of the officers have been held responsible for the death of Breonna Taylor to date. There is a petition out um, online that people that people can take part in with change.org. And you can, um, you know, add your signature if you feel that the officer should be held responsible. So um, people are still fighting for this. And there are 11 million signatures to date. And, you know, people are still pushing for this. So um, if you want to get involved, you can get involved in this particular way with change.org. And it is justice for Breonna Taylor. But um, the update is that the that last officer who was indicted did not face any charges. So we will keep you informed, guys. And our last story is about the Crown Act. And we've talked about the Crown Act a few times on the podcast. And we've actually had some guests on to talk about the Crown Act. And so um, I really uh, admire this legislation. And so we will continue to talk about it. And there's a great update. And for those who are not aware, Crown and the Crown Act stands for Creating a Respectful and Open world for natural hair and so um, here's what we need to share about the crown act so last week the house passed the crown act which would ban hair related discrimination all right and so uh, it passed in a vote of 235 to 189 along party lines it was introduced by uh, congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman from New Jersey. And so it this legislation prohibits discrimination based on an individual's texture or style of hair. And the bill is now getting ready to go to the Senate. And so um, what this bill um, goes on to state is that people of African descent are deprived of educational and employment opportunities for wearing their hair in natural or protective hairstyles, such as locks, cornrows, twists, braids, bantu knots, or afros. So this is stating that people wearing these particular natural hairstyles listed um, could not be deprived of an opportunity so you cannot be passed over for a job or lose your job or be sent home from school we've talked about some news stories recently here where people um, face discrimination in scenarios of children uh, being in school and being sent home for wearing braids or people on the job um, having issues at work for wearing their hair and locks and things like that. So this legislation protects the people um, for wearing their hair in this manner. And so, um, and I've seen seen a lot of posts, especially on um, professional websites like LinkedIn. Um, that's one of my favorite websites to frequent for professional um, social media, if you will. And I'm seeing posts like, natural hair is professional hair this or a picture of a black woman with their hair in a natural hairstyle and the words this is professional and so and seeing uh, all different races of people like the post it's really great to see because um you know this is the type of diversity we want to um, see and embrace so i'm uh, very happy about this bill And I was happy to learn that the Crown Act is being championed in my neck of the woods here in Missouri by Congresswoman Cori Bush. So shout out to her. And I encourage and challenge you guys to look up to see if the Crown Act is being pushed and championed where you reside. So let's look into that. Um, good item for discussion right so i'll have more updates to share as always i thank you guys for listening 
at this time, we're going to go ahead and conclude the episode. We greatly appreciate you listening. We invite you to follow us on social media, on Instagram, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. On Twitter, it is Woke by. On Facebook, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. We also have the new website up, www.wokebyaccident.net. Please check us out and also follow us on all of your favorite streaming platforms and please leave a review and share feedback. You can also reach out by Gmail, wokebyaccident at gmail.com. And every time you listen, we appreciate it so much. Thank you for listening and take care.